Hi and welcome to App Presser. I wanted to give you a quick tour. The first thing that you're going to see is your app dashboard. You won't have any apps here, but what you can do is create a new app by clicking the Create New App button. And you are going to go through the settings that we have here. Title, some colors, um, all of this stuff you can change later so you don't need to worry about getting it perfect. Make sure that you install the AppPressor plugin and the JWT authentication plugin on your website, as well as the AppPressor theme. There are instructions on how to do that here. And then if you go to the next tab for configure, you're able to choose a menu, um, add some other settings, add in your WordPress URL, and then choose some app pages. And again, you can choose these things and add and, and subtract later, but then you're going to go ahead and press create app. And when you're done, it's going to take you to your app dashboard. And you'll see some settings here. We're going to get to the customize and build app in just a minute, but you'll see some settings for push notifications. This is how you set those up. And we also have some other general settings. Make sure that you have the site slug and app ID in your app presser settings page on your WordPress website. And then the other so the other uh, tabs that we have here, you can check out our documentation on how to include like AdMob ads or Google Analytics, things like that. So I won't go through all those right now. Let's go to the app customizer because that's when you're, you're going to spend most of your time. This is where, uh, if you don't see an app preview here, it's probably still building. It does take a couple minutes for the initial setup. But once that shows up, then you are able to add content to your app here, change the colors and uh, settings and things like that. So the first tab you'll see is colors. Uh, you know, you can change the colors of your app here. And you should see that show up live in the app, but it will not actually be pushed to all the pages of the app until you press save and the, and the uh, preview is refreshed. So go ahead and save and refresh if you're not seeing what you think you should see. Then you can change some other features here, add some custom CSS. The settings tab is where you can change which menus are set in your app. Um, you will need to make sure you have at least one menu set or else your app will not show anything. And then we have some settings for the app store, native features, icon and splash screen, things like that. I won't go through all those here because we do have that in our documentation. On the build and preview tab, this is where you're going to be able to rebuild your app once after you make changes. So you don't need to rebuild your app unless you are adding custom pages to it or you made some other changes that are not showing up in the preview. But for things like colors and just changing like the name of a menu item, things like that, you don't actually need to rebuild. You just need to save and, and the preview should refresh for you. So let's talk about adding content to your app. Uh, you can do that in two different ways. Let's say that I have a WordPress page that uses a plugin that I need to work, and so I want that on my in my app. Uh, let's say it has you know a contact form, or maybe it is a showing some business listings or something like that that has some interactivity. Um, I'm going to go to my menus, and I'm going to click on the menu that is being used by my app, and then I'm going to click Add Items, and then go to WordPress and External Links. Here I will add the HTTPS URL to mysite.com, my page. This will be just the full URL to the, the page that is that you want displayed in the app. And then just give it a some text and then click Add to Menu. Uh, once it's added to the menu, you can expand that item and give it a class for the icons. And this uses Ion Icons. So you can look those up at ioniconscom for example, I'll give it a class of list, which will show the list icon. Um, and then some extra classes we have for things like uh, displaying it for certain logged in or logged out or you know hiding the menu item, things like that, which you can find in our documentation. Now the next way to add content is to go to custom pages. And this is really the preferred way to add content, but it just doesn't always work with custom WordPress plugins. But you can click add new page. And if you wanted to add WordPress posts to your app, then you would click here and then you can select the route or you can add a custom API route. And this goes to the WP API. So if you have a custom endpoint, you can use that or you can just use posts and you can enter custom parameters like for 
categories, tags, things like that. But it does support custom post types and you can choose the display and some other options here. You also have the ability to create custom layouts and these work great for things like learn dash pages. Um, you can find in our documentation how to add that. If you want to create offline pages that are just built with HTML, you can do that. You can also use Ionic tags here, such as like Ion card and things like that. We have custom elements such as AP list, which will display a, a list of posts. We also have a few other ones. Um, for example, your push notification settings, language settings, things like that can all go in these custom HTML pages. Um, I'm not going to go over them all because that is in our documentation. Um, but those are very handy and um, you should really use those as much as possible because they're going to load quickly and you can fully customize the layout. Media downloads is going to be a playlist of downloadable media content. As you can see from this preview, you can play audio and video and also allow your app users to download those to their device if you choose. And then if you're using BuddyPress or WooCommerce, you'll also see some other I options here and we may be adding some more options in the future as well which you'll be able to see there. Um, I would recommend checking out our documentation for some pre-made custom HTML layout templates uh, that will help you get started very quickly with building really cool pages for your apps. W when you're done adding all this stuff like if you were to build a custom HTML page and add it to your menu you would go back to the building and settings tab, build and preview tab and click rebuild preview. Um, when you're ready to submit to the app stores or test on a device, please contact us. And uh, the Publish Changes button is for live apps that are in the app store. That is so that you can be making changes locally here and not affect apps in the app store. And when you're ready to publish those to the apps that are in the app store, you can click Publish Changes and it will update those apps. That's about it for this video. We're going to have a lot more documentation and videos that you can check out to learn lots more about each feature. And I will see you in the next video.